I am back uh, giving you the quick tip for our quick tips emailed newsletter. I don't know whether you got this from the newsletter or you got it uh, by going to YouTube, but uh, either way, here I am talking to you. Uh, you can sign up for the newsletter. I'll tell you how to do it at the end of this little quick tip. Uh, this month's quick tip for you wonderful QuickBooks users out of there. Oh, by the way, I should tell you. I know I haven't done one of these in a couple of months. I'm really sorry. It's been a crazy fall. It's been ridiculous. But anyway, we're going to start doing these for sure, no matter what. We're going to do this every single month because I know there's a lot of you out here that like this. So anyway, uh, I promise. So this month's quick tip uh, has come from my live classes because so many people ask about PayPal. So I want to talk to you about PayPal and how to track that, how to deal with PayPal in QuickBooks. Okay? If you have a PayPal account, what a lot of people do is they don't enter any transactions in QuickBooks until it's time to go to, until it's time to actually transfer money from the PayPal account to the regular account, and that's wrong. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, one thing, the timing's wrong. You're not entering the transactions when they occurred, because they occurred in PayPal. You're not entering them until it's time to transfer into the regular checking account, so your timing's off. The other thing is, um, if you don't zero out the account at the end of the month, then uh, which frequently we forget or we don't do, uh, then that you have a PayPal account in real life with a balance in it, but yet when you look in QuickBooks, there's no money listed on the balance sheet. The PayPal account isn't even there. So what you need to understand is a PayPal account is a bank account, just like any other bank account at Wells Fargo, Bank of America, whatever. So what you want to do is you want to go into your chart of accounts list, and you want to create an account for PayPal. Okay, I've already created one. I'll just go ahead and edit this. So what I've done here is I've created an account. I made the type bank and I named it PayPal. Okay, then click save and close. So that's pretty easy. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to use this PayPal account just like you would a regular checking account. When somebody pays you via PayPal, you're going to deposit it into the PayPal account. When you have to enter the little fee that PayPal charges you, you'll enter that as you would any bank service charge out of the PayPal account. And if you happen to pay bills out of the PayPal account, since this listed as a bank account, you can enter that as well. All right. So the first time that you uh, set this PayPal account up, obviously it's going to have the balance of zero. And what I want you to do is go ahead and zero the PayPal account out in real life. Go ahead and transfer the money like you normally do. Enter the transactions like you normally would, which is wrong, but enter them anyway uh, so that you can get this zero. So once the PayPal account in real life equals this zero, then we can start using our new method going forward. Okay. So what we're going to do is it's real easy. You do everything just like you normally do. If you're the kind of person that invoices customers, when a customer pays you via PayPal, you're going to click on the receive payments window just like you normally would. All right. If you, however, are a person who doesn't do the invoice receive payment thing, but you do sales receipts, then We'll click on here when somebody pays us, and again, we'll just record it just like normal. Okay? Now what QuickBooks does, hopefully you know this, is it points all of that money that we've put into both of those places into the undeposited funds account. Then when it's time to go to the bank at the end of the week, we typically click record deposits. We check off what it is that's in our drawer and we take it to the bank. Well, when it comes to PayPal, you don't go to the bank. The, tra the, the transaction just appears in the PayPal account. So what you'll need to do is anytime somebody pays you with PayPal, record, receive payment or sales receipt, just like you normally do, then go to the PayPal website, then when you see that the PayPal, the deposit has hit the PayPal website, here's one for $62.50, I'll click this one, I'll click OK, and then what you want to do is you want to enter the PayPal fee, and I'll actually just create an account called PayPal Fees, okay? And you're going to enter the fee that they charged, this is an expense account, 
you're going to enter the fee that they charged as a minus $39.95, whatever the fee is. So, oh, I said 95. Well, whatever, that says 90. So that this amount is the amount that actually is the net of the transaction, okay? Some people want to do these fancy things on the sales receipts or the invoices where they uh, add a line here for the total amount. And then they add some minus line underneath here. Let me put this in here. They'll put some minus line underneath here for the fee. Don't do that. Don't create an item and try and do it on a sales receipt. Don't do that. You want to do it at the time that it hit the bank. Uh, that way, the sales receipt will be the total of what the person paid, donated, whatever. Uh, not the total less the fee. Okay, so you want to put the total there, and then you take the fee out in the make deposit window right here. Okay, and this is the key. You see where it says deposit to? I'm going to deposit it into the PayPal account. Okay, so just pull up my little chart of accounts list here. Let me make this a little smaller. And we're going to go up to where PayPal is, and you'll see PayPal is at zero. When I click save and close to save and close this thing, let me pull this out again a little bit easier to see. I'm going to click save and close. Now the PayPal's at 6,210. Okay, so you'll do that with all of your transactions. Okay, if um, if you received a payment, it's going to be the same thing. If you do the invoice thing uh, and then receive a payment then we'll just receive a payment from someone. Let's see who has an outstanding invoice that we can receive against. Uh, Sam Jones, no, uh, Patsy Stone. All right, so here's Patsy Stone, and we'll say she paid via PayPal $12,500. Notice how I'm putting the total amount that she paid, okay? It's gonna throw it into undeposited funds. I'll click Save and Close. When I go into Record Deposits, there's Patsy Stone right here with the 12,005. I check it off. I click OK. And once again, this is where I put my little PayPal fee right there minus whatever the number was to get down to what was deposited into PayPal. So if you missed it the first time, PayPal 6,210.10, save and close. PayPal is now at 18664.14, okay? So this does mean that you'll need to go to the PayPal account uh, every time there's a transaction to make sure that you're entering the fee correctly, okay? Now, some people pay things out of the PayPal account. Awesome. What I can do is anytime you pay a bill out of the PayPal account, uh, if it's a bill that you entered in QuickBooks, actually, you can go to the Pay Bills screen, and if it was entered in QuickBooks and then you decided to pay for it out of the PayPal account, I can click Office Depot, and Payment Method is Check, and then over here, since this is a bank account, I pick PayPal. And now I'm paying it out of the PayPal account, this bill for $4.96. So I'm going to go back to my chart of accounts, PayPal's at 18,664.14. I pay selected bills. Now it's 18,168.14. Pretty cool. Okay. Now, if you, on the other hand, just, it's not a bill that you've entered, but you still just pay something out of the PayPal account, well, you can just go to the right check window for that. PayPal. And then over here uh, in the number field, uh, if there's some sort of transaction number identifier you can put here, I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm just going to put PayPal. And then whatever bill we paid, if we didn't enter it in QuickBooks, we can just do it on the right check window like I'm doing, $150, we'll say. And we'll point it to Utilities, and we'll put it to Gas. And then I'll go over here to the Lists. And chart of accounts, PayPal's 18,168.14, save and close, and 18,018.14. So see, it's a bank account, and now you're entering the transactions. I'll just double click on the register. You're entering transactions on the date that they occurred, and it's affecting the PayPal account as you enter them. So what that means is your financial statements will always include the balance in the PayPal account. And it, as it should, right on the balance sheet. I'll go and look at a balance sheet real quick. 
uh, balance sheet and see PayPal is listed right there. Okay. So then when it comes time to transfer the money, that's real easy to do. Obviously, you just go to PayPal and tell them to transfer the funds, but in QuickBooks, you just go to Banking, and you go to Transfer Funds, and you pick the account that you're transferring out of, that would be PayPal, and the account that you're transferring into, Checking. So see, this transfer, in the past, if you've been doing it wrong, this is when you've been trying to enter the transactions. Now you don't do anything with the transfer. You've already entered the transactions, okay? All you're doing is recording the transfer. This is much more accurate. PayPal's at 18018. The checking account's at 43. I click Save and Close. Whoops, I forgot to put the number that I'm transferring. Uh, I'll transfer the entire, entire balance, 018.14. And I'll click, let me pull this back up again so you can see it. PayPal's at 18018. Checking's at 43. I click Save and Close. Checking's at 61. PayPal's at zero. Okay. The really cool thing about this is you can reconcile the PayPal account also. If you go to Banking and click Reconcile, you can actually reconcile the PayPal account. Uh, just like you would any of your other bank accounts. So I think that's it. If you have any more questions, feel free to call me on the 800 number or sign up for the technical support. And I promise you this time, I will see you next month. I promise. Bye.